Canadians have always been enthralled with our unique geography. Early explorers were filled with excitement when they talked about a new land, and today's immigrants and tourists arrive with their eyes open wide. Dense forests, plentiful lakes, mountains, plains, icebergs, and beaches. If you've been born and raised Canadian, then it's easy to take for granted. But this land is stunning. Just beautiful. Those living in the country tend to appreciate this a little more than most. One of the great things about living in rural and small town areas is the chance to be close to the land. But this relationship is more than skin deep. Rural Canadians aren't just drawn by the beauty of the land, but by its bounty as well. Many of this country's oldest industries spring from the land, and forestry and the fishery, for example, continue to provide a livelihood for many. Considering their ties to the land, it should come as no surprise that many rural Canadians are looking to gain more control about how their land is managed. For a long time, managing Canada's forests and lakes was up to private companies who were worried about profits or government bodies that weren't always looking out for local interests. In reaction to this came a lot of talk about community resource management. By gaining a voice in the management of the land, it was thought that rural Canadians could put it to the best of use for both present and future needs. Uh, Community-based natural resource management is essentially a system where natural resource management responsibilities are undertaken more by local people for local benefits. Um, that, that idea of local benefits is really the, the underlying principle behind it and the reason people support it. Uh, they want to have greater decision-making authority locally and they feel like they can better understand and provide the benefits the local community is seeking in terms of jobs, profits, reinvestment, and a long-term stewardship ethic. It is these ideals that inspired the Miramichi Forestry Committee. You see, the Miramichi River in central and northeastern New Brunswick is over 200 kilometers long, and many rural communities lie on its forested banks. So this Community Forestry Committee has been working since 1999 to gain greater decision-making rights so that the residents of these communities can have a greater say in the decisions that affect their communities. But even though the committee has long sought a greater role, they've not been entrusted with the management of any land. It's a reminder that there are a lot of people invested in the future of the forest. One of the difficulties with introducing Community Forestry New Brunswick is that uh, the groups that are proposing the idea have not brought forth a viable economic model for the government to embrace as justification for changing the public policy incorporated in the Crown Lands and Forest Act, which essentially gives control of the Crown Lands to 10 licensees. Some of the goals of community management have been met by taking a slightly different approach. The region is home to some of the most substantial Atlantic salmon populations in the world, and so some groups have partnered together in order to protect this important species and economic resource. This partnership, known as the Miramichi Watershed Management Committee, includes many partners, including large corporations, First Nations communities, fishing groups, environmental associations, and tourist boards. Working together, these different groups signed an agreement with the federal and provincial governments to be a full partner in decisions affecting the watershed. The committee is not quite what we'd usually define as community management, but many of the goals of community management are being met. Smaller subcommittees meet to focus on areas of special interest, the economic importance of the salmon stocks are recognized, and environmental preservation remains a top priority. For example, the committee took over the hatchery in South Esk in the late 90s. The hatchery is involved in stocking the river system with fish and is being developed into a regional center of excellence. It'll be a leading facility in the Atlantic for research and monitoring. Many Canadians live close to the land and want to have a say in how it's treated. This is a noble goal, but we have to remember that everyone has grown attached to the land in one way or another. Community management is going to be a reality in the future. Rural Canadians must find a solution that includes everyone's concerns and makes everybody happy.